of Ter'er, full shear. So we are in the middle of a Maimer, which was discussing the difference between the seven shepherds, the Shiva Rome, and the uh, eight princes, the Shemona Mesichai Adam, and how this relates to the difference between the menorah of the base of Migdash with seven branches compared to the menorah of Hanukkah with eight branches. So now the Maimer says, halfway down the first column of Lama Dalet, that now we, un- we can understand the menorah of Hanukkah because the Greeks, the Syrian Greeks, made all the oil in the base of Migdash impure, and oil represents Chachma, and therefore making the oil impure refers to uh, overpowering of Chachma, of impurity, uh, which the Greeks were also very... Uh, uh, in, in, uh, intellectual, they were leading uh, thinkers of the time, and so and they wanted to make the Torah uh, forgotten, so that the chachma, the the wisdom of holiness, forgotten, so the wisdom of uh, the secular wisdom should overpower, and therefore, in order to fix this problem up, chachma had already been damaged, so we had to bring down from beyond chachma. And that's the idea of the one jar of oil that was found still with the seal of the Kohen Gadol, that this is uh, from beyond Hishal Shalos, uh, from what's sometimes called Virav Chesed. In the uh, 13 uh, attributes of mercy, the Yurgim Medesa Rachmim, we have Virav Chesed, which is beyond the regular order of, of uh, Hishal Shalos, of uh, uh, bringing down of uh, Hashem's light. And it's specifically because uh, we're now working on beyond the regular system. So it, it's a market. It's something that surrounds us. It's beyond us. So therefore, it can come down even nowadays, even without the base of Migdash. So the regular order of bringing down Hashem's energy has been uh, limited. But the beyond is still there, even in the times of exile. But in the base of Migdash, they were working within the regular system because it was a suitable time to bring down Hashem's light. And therefore, there were seven uh, lambs that uh, are compared to the uh, seven shepherds. And then the uh, light of Hashem that was brought down was able to be internalized because <clears throat> that's the idea of the shepherd that it, and the idea of seven, that it, it is the light that we're able to take in. Now, the Pasuk says, Ki at aneri havaya, v'havaya yagia, sorry, elikai yagia chashchi. You, uh, for you, light my lamp, Hashem, and my uh, my God does light my darkness. So it, it mentions uh, Hashem twice. The first time is uh, is Hashem as He is, the light of Hashem within His shalshlos, within the regular order of uh, order of uh, uh, bringing down Hashem's light, and and that is uh, what lights uh, the candle, which is the the lamp of the base of Migdash. Whereas the second time mentions Hashem that lights up the darkness, that's the light of Hashem, which is beyond His shalshlos, beyond the regular order of worlds, and uh, which, which surrounds, which is sovim or makif, it surrounds us from beyond, and that's why it lights up the dark. Uh, because it, it can go even into a dark place, a time of exile. And that's the idea of the light, the lamps of Hanukkah. So the uh, the shepherds, they give some, they give uh, a uh, light of a shem revela- a revelation of a shem that can be internalized. That can that's like food. Whereas the uh, the prince and, and like the Pasuk says, that that uh, uh, the Torah should be in my stomach, meaning that it should be internalized. And uh, the, the, this was a prayer that David asked Hashem. He said in uh, to heal him that uh, la, that uh, I want uh, to, to I want to be able to do your will and have the Torah within my stomach, within my innards, until in chapter forty. Uh, whereas the the uh, level brought down on Hanukkah, which is from the eight princes, that Nesichim, that's a makif something that surrounds from beyond. And that's like we mentioned yesterday that Rabbi Hanina ben Daisa, when he, his davening was more effective than Rabbi Yechem and Zakai because he was uh, reaching to this makif energy and that could do, do transform nature. Now, the mitzvahs, 
the mitzvahs uh, also, also can uh, uh, can uh, go beyond nature to this level of makif. Now, Mashiach is one of the uh, people who can bring down this makif energy, this beyond energy, like we see with Mashiach, that it says that he will sm smell, he'll smell, he'll be able to sniff out uh, the, the, the people. And like it says, Merach Vadai, and that'll be able to judge based on his sense of smell. Now, this idea of smell is uh, something beyond. It's not when you eat it and you take it in. It's this air that sort of surrounds it, something very subtle and something uh, compared to Makif, this the energy that surrounds. And like we, it's mentioned in Zayar, that scent, smell is connected with garments, which are around the person, unlike food that goes into the person, like the story in Zayar with uh, when the, uh, the two Chachamim came uh, to uh, the uh, child of Rav Hamnuna, the Yenuka, and uh, he, he said that, you know, his mother said, go and they'll, they'll bless you. And he says, oh, I don't want to step forward. I don't want to go to close to them because I can smell on their garments that they, they didn't say Shema this morning. And they said, you know what, you're right. We didn't say Shema, but we it was for a good reason. We were busy the whole time. There was a Hassan and Kala, and they didn't have the, uh, the money to be able to arrange to get married. And we were helping them. We were collecting money for them to help them get married. And therefore, we didn't say the Shema. So either way, we see we see that he uh, he could smell that he says he, with the smell of the garments, the smell which is market, the smell is connected with garments which is market. On the other hand, the shepherds they give the food. By the way, we'll mention later that Mashiach has both levels. Mashiach both gives the makif, the beyond energy that we can't, which is higher, but we can't take it in an internal way, and gives the intern the internal energy that we're able to take in, the panemius. Next paragraph of Azayovan. So now we can understand why Beishame and Beisil argue about how to light Hanukkah candles that Beishame say you start off with eight and then every day you go down all the way till on the eighth night you light one, can one lamp, whereas Beisil say that you keep on adding. And Beishame's reason is just like with the bulls of Sukkot that the first day they would bring 13 bulls as a karma, the next day 12, 11, etc. Till the seventh day of Sukkot they bring only seven. So we keep on going down Whereas Basil said, no, you always have to go up in holiness. So what's the connection with the uh, bulls of Sukkot? Because uh, Sukkot is also a time of giving over the makif energy, the beyond energy, and, uh, and therefore connects to Hanukkah as well. Now we say in Hallel that that Hashem's kindness was overpowering, was too much. So that's also the idea of makif, that the kindness, the, uh, the, the energy that Hashem is, the spiritual energy, godly energy that Hashem is gifting to us and His light that is gifting to us is, is, is too much. It's, it, it, we can't take it in, in an internal way. And... Uh, through this, uh, this uh, mark of energy uh, can be effective and transform transformative for anyone, not specifically people seeking out Hashem. And that's why it says that uh, in that same uh, short chapter of, of, of Hallel, Hallel Hashem Kol Goyim, that uh, that all nations will praise Hashem, and then it continues uh, with the next passage. Because Hashem's kindness was overpowering, that because the light was uh, energy from beyond, therefore it had an Im impact and influence on all peoples. And because Sukkot is that beyond energy, therefore it starts with. 13, because 13 is a number that uh, relates to the beyond, like the Yud Gimel Midas Arachnim, when the 13 attributes of mercy, which are when we don't deserve good, we can't ask based on our merits, we just, we just try to tap into the 13 attributes, which are just mercy beyond what we really deserve. And then, every day of Sukkot, there's less and less uh, carbonus, and that's because 
we start off with the uh, full 13. And once we've achieved that, so then the opposition, then the forces of uh, impurity are lessened. And then we don't need all 13 anymore. Then we only need 12, etc. Each day, as uh, we've, we've uh, uh, transformed more and more with this Makif energy, this beyond energy, uh, so we, we, we need less and less light all the way till the last day of Sukkot. On Hanukkah, however, it's like Sukkot that it's uh, we, we're trying to bring down a mark of energy, a surrounding energy, beyond energy, which can illuminate even the darkness and transform even the uh, impurity. But the difference is that on Hanukkah, we transform impurity, but it, it requires a battle. It's a fight, unlike Sukkot, which it, where it just happens. Uh, like we see uh, you know, another possible conceal in, in, in Halal, that Sabuni, that they surround me. So we've got David HaMelech had all these enemies surrounding him. B'Shem Hashem Ki Amilam. In the name of Hashem, I cut them down. So this is this also refers to uh, enemies and they're cut down through this Makif energy. And that's like Hanukkah where it's a war. The difference is that on Sukkot, because it's a mitzvah, min atayr, it's a biblical mitzvah, so therefore Hashem assists. And we don't need a battle. The, uh, the, opposition, the spiritual opposition is just automatically knocked down and subdued. Uh, whereas uh, whereas on, uh, on uh, Hanukkah, it's because it's mid- Midrash Bonans, therefore we need more uh, active involvement and actually to fight for it. Whereas that, so therefore, Beisha may say every day you need less and less candles uh, as, as the darkness is subdued, subdued more and more. Whereas Beisha will say, no, every day go up and add one more candle. So what's their response? Beisha will say that there's a difference, that with Sukkot, that's a biblical mitzvah, and, and the Torah comes from Chachma, uh, and therefore... The uh, therefore, in order to uh, uh, sorry, uh, so, sorry, in order to uh, uh, bring that down, uh, in order it has to be, it, it has, it has, Hashem can do it because uh, Hashem just decides that I can do it and that's it. It's a biblical myth, Hashem says I'm doing it. Whereas on Hanukkah, which is Rabbanan. Uh, so we can't bring, we can't straight away go with the ultimate revelation. Now, we can't start with the full hands, the full eight or the full 13, if it's Jerobon. We have to work our way up because now it's our own efforts. And therefore, we start with one and then we get to two and then three, etc. Every day going up and, and, and giving our best shot more and more. So ultimately, we get to eight, this mark of energy, which can uh, knock out the, uh, the darkness and, and impurity. We have a similar example, the difference between Pesach and Sirius Oymah. Pesach is this uh, gift from beyond. Hashem just gifts us and we're redeemed. Whereas Sirius Oymah, we're going level by level. The first day we have one, next two, day two, three, all the way till we get to 49. And then Shavuos, the ultimate is 50. And that's why when we count Sirius Oymah, we don't say today is the first day, today is the second day. We say today is one day, today is two days. Because on the second day, we have now two level two lights of Hashem uh, uh, present that we've refined and brought down and then on the third day three so it's not the third it's three where and that's all the idea of Sirius Oema we're working step by step by step uh, where and and actually this is the difference also uh, between uh, Sirius Oema uh, nowadays compared to Sirius Oema in the times of the base of Migdash that uh, in the time of the base of Migdash, they were able to bring down the panimi, the in, in, internal light, which means that it, it, it has a bigger influence. But on the other hand, it's a lower light. Whereas nowadays, it's a market light. And uh, perhaps this is why it doesn't mention this here. That, that So nowadays, it's a midrab banan, so you're saying midrab banan, whereas in the time of the base of Migdash, it's day rice, and therefore Hashem uh, helped with that. But on the other hand, it's it, it, we're not in the darkness as much, perhaps. So, th- so this is the difference between seven, the seven shepherds versus the eight princes. 
And based on this one, also understand, this is the next paragraph of the now. So understand the difference between the uh, eight, uh, between, sorry, between the uh, Kabbalah's Elma Hashemayim, where uh, we accept Hashem's yoke, which comes before, first we accept Hashem, and then we accept the mitzvahs. And this is also the, uh, the difference. Uh, between, like we said, the two lamps, the lamps of the uh, the lamp of the mitzvahs versus the lamp of the neshama, that uh, the uh, when we accept uh, we accept um, the uh, Hashem, so then that's that's compared to a mirror, which is the where we don't see through the glass. Whereas when we're accepting the mitzvahs, that's like the, where we're seeing through the glass. So the mitzvahs is more giving more revelation, but. Uh, it's also, on the other hand, on the other, the uh, the accepting of Hashem in general, it, it, it might be uh, less revealed, but it's it's taking from a higher level, from a market level. This is also the difference, like we were discussing yesterday, between the wick versus the fuel. That the oil, it it is what allows the fire to burn, but you can't have the oil right on the fire. You have to have the wick in between, and that wick is compared to the neshama, the soul, and therefore, when when we we're counting the aimer, so aimer, so then uh, we're working on refining the uh, the animal soul. So it might be the uh, less revealed light, like the mirror, not like the magnifying glass, but on. Uh, uh, whereas Shavuos is the near midst of the lamp of the midst of the that's a more revealed light, but still it's reaching from Makif. And that's why it says that we count Mimachra Shabbos from the day after Shabbos. What does this mean? That Shabbos is the idea of mitzvah. That's where there's revelation and the mirror. Whereas after Shabbos means beyond Shabbos, that level beyond Shabbos, which is uh, we're, we're, which is uh, the market energy, and this is also like we said yesterday that uh, mitzvah is our hol- is our holiness. Whereas when we uh, transform the dark- the darkness of this world, the animal souls, so then we connect to Hashem's holiness beyond our holiness. Now, next paragraph, which uh, the top of the the third the second side, which is the third column, beginning of in beer. So the eight princes, on one hand, we can say that they're lower than the seven shepherds because the seven shepherds give over a light which is able to be taken in, whereas the princes, it's not able to be taken in. So it's uh, it doesn't work as well. And that, that implies that they come from a lower uh, spiritual source. On the other hand, they give the makifs, so they give a higher light. So the explanation is it's like the difference between if you imagine a uh, a uh, nicer tree, a fruit which is uh, exquisite, which is uh, uh, hard to find, and then a regular tree. So you might have the, the fruit of the regular tree versus the leaf of the more rare uh, tree and, and beautiful tree. So on one hand, the fruit is the real thing. That's what we actually eat. So that's more important. On the other hand, the leaf comes from a nicer tree. So the seven shepherds, they cut, they are the internal, they are the actual fruit, but they're from a lower tree. They're from, uh, uh, and actually because of that, that's why they're the internal. Whereas the uh, eight Nesichayot, the eight princes, they are from a higher level, but they're from this external within that level. And that's why we find that the there are some uh, people who are very great and pure and holy, but they're not. Uh, they don't become uh, Jewish leaders. And they don't they teach Torah to the masses, and that's because their soul is from the the princes, the Nesichi Adam. So it's very high. It's actually even higher than the shepherds. But it's they they don't teach. They don't have such a direct influence on their, on their generation. Whereas others who might be imperfect, yet they become leading uh, teachers of Torah. And that's because they come from this, their soul is on one hand from a lower level, but within the level that they are, they're, they're internal and therefore they're able to teach Torah. So now the the uh, eight uh, prince, the eight princes, 
they come from the first eight of the 13 attributes that you give them and the first eight are the ones which are market. Uh, there are two uh, counts of the uh, of the uh, what are the what are the um, thirteen uh, attributes the Yudgim Midas, but uh, according to the Mekubalim, it's generally counted like this: the first two words Hashem Hashem are not part of the count; they're the introductory words and even beyond. But the thirteen are Kel, Rachum, Vechanun, Erech Apayim, Vrav Chesed, VMS. So those eight of the 13 are all market. They're all still beyond worlds. Whereas the ninth, La Lofim, to uh, that Noitzah uh, Chesed, which was the eight, means that he keeps, uh, he guards the uh, kindness. And then La Lofim, two unto, unto thousands. And that word unto thousands, La Lofim, that's the beginning of coming in in an internal way, but it's a lower level of light. And therefore, there are eight princes. So the uh, lalafim, this word lalafim, which means thousands, it's also an aleph. And that's because uh, an aleph takes the yud. There's the yud, the, 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 when you write an aleph, it's got a yud at the top, a vav in the middle, a line in the middle, and then an upside down yud at the bottom. So the idea of that of that is that the uh, light coming down from a, coming down through the vav. The vav is that hook that that links uh, links the two sides together. Uh, but it comes through a a, a symptom. Um, through a contraction, and it's not just the like a market light that it comes down as it is, and uh, also I love him. Besides meaning thousands, and besides meaning an aleph, also means to teach. So teaching is also where it's understood. So it's not something beyond; it's something that they're able to take in, in uh, with the chachman bina. Uh, and uh, the, the shepherds, on the other hand, they uh, they are given they, they given it in an internal way. Now on Hanukkah, because the, the oil, which was the uh, internal uh, energy, the oil representing Chachma was uh, defiled. So therefore, we had to reach to Makif energy. And similarly on Sukkot, there's all, we also reach this makif energy, and that, that's also the idea of a sukkah, which surrounds us. Um, but on Sukkot, it, it was done without a war, like we said before, whereas Hanukkah, since it's a, a, drab, a drabonon, it's more with, within the world, so it's with a war, and without Hashem just giving it, granting it to us from the beginning. And that now I understand, like we said, explained before, the debate between Beis Shammai and Beis Hillel, and I'll try at the end of the moment just notes that there's a whole nother explanation on the difference between the seven shepherds versus the eight princes, that the uh, seven represents the seven midas and the, the we've discussed in previous memoriam about how uh, the in the midas, that's the, the, the uh, emotions in the world of Toyo, they were very passionate and very fiery, very holy, but uh, they were too much for each other. Each middah did not each did not allow the other middah, and also they were too much for their vessels for their kalim, and therefore it shattered and and fell down into the phys the uh, lower worlds, and and then we refine the sparks and bring it back. So what got shattered? Where was the the break of tail in the seven middahs? On the other hand, the eight. The, what is the eighth level? So beyond the middahs. There's a bina, right? Sometimes we count the ten spheres as keser, chachma, bina, and then the seven minutes, chesed, vertiferous, etc. So a bina, which is understanding, that is where we develop ideas. But since it's still beyond the emotion, so it's uh, there's less sort of uh, ego, and 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 therefore there's less uh, fighting, and and the the uh, shattering was only in the seven, not in the eight. And therefore, the seven are within the, the place where there, where there was a shattering where, uh, of El Mateo, of the world of chaos, uh, whereas uh, the eight represents beyond. And therefore, the eight, Bina, is more effective in battling Ashur, which uh, this uh, possible where it originally mentions the seven shepherds and eight, uh, and the eight princes is talking about that they're going to help us uh, defend ourselves against Ashur, against Assyria. So the eight are more effective than the seven. That's the end of this minor.
next Maimer, it starts with the Pasuk. The Pasuk says, Ki im chamekar chaim ba'er chamira er. So, and, and this is actually a Pasuk which, uh, from Tehillim, and in Kapitol Lam and Bav, chapter 36, and we say it when putting on a talus. So the Pasuk uh, translates as for with you is the source of life. In, uh, in your light, we, we will see light. So this word nira er, we could tra- it could be translated in two ways. Either the nun means we, we will see light. In your light, we will see light. Or it means light will be seen in the passive. So there's two translations to this Pasuk. And uh, so we're going to explain the two ways to understand this Pasuk in this moment. Also, the first phrase says, with you is the source of life. Of life. Why does it say with you? It should say you are the source of life. Now, in the Haftar of Hanukkah, it's fr- taken from Zechariah. And uh, near the end of the Haftar, we find that uh, ha- ha- the angel comes back wakes up as as Zachariah and says, what do you see? He says, I see a menorah, menorah I see a golden uh, menorah, a golden candelabra, and the gulal reishat has this oil bowl on top of it. The shiva neyasal leah, and it has seven lamps on it, uh, shiva, now there are seven, the shiva matzakas, leneris, ashal reishat, and there are seven tubes, each to the lamps that were on top of it. And then it says that there were two olive trees nearby, etc. And then the angel says to him, what do you, what do you see? What are these? And uh, sorry, the Zachary asks, uh, what are these? And the angel says, don't you know? And he says, no, I don't know. So he says, this is the word of Hashem to Zerubavel, uh, not Le'vachayv, Le'vachayv, not by military force and not by physical strength, Kim Beruchi, rather by my spirit. So now the Altrev explains uh, the, these uh, psukim and first asks, or first uh, uh, notes that the, the idea of the manure, that uh, the Pasuk says, when it uh, explains what is the manure, he says, I don't know what this is. And he says, this is what it is. Zedra Hashem is Rebavel. This is the word of Hashem to Zerubavel. So, Although if simply that's just an introduction to the answer, the Al-Trevor says that that's the beginning of the answer. He says, what is this Menorah? He says, Zedvar Hashem is Rebavel, that the Menorah is the word of Hashem to Zerubavel. Meaning that uh, the Menorah is the word of Hashem, which is the uh, Jewish, uh, the Knesset is all the Jewish collective, the source of all the Jewish souls, because the, the, the speech of Hashem is Malchus, the last of the ten uh, spherats, the, the last of the ten attributes, and and uh, that that is, that is the source of uh, all Jewish souls. Uh, and then we've got the seven lamps, which are the seven midas of the love and reverence and tiferes, uh, which includes uh, pride among other aspects. And uh, every neshama has all the seven midas, all, all seven emotional attributes in a holy way, somewhere deep inside. And uh, and this is this is uh, the word the word of Hash- Hash- Hashem gives grants us all these midas, and even someone who's uh, uh, very wicked, he has this uh, light of Hashem at least surrounding him. And uh, like it says that when a call by asara shkinta sharia, that whenever you have ten Jews coming together, the shkina rests on them. So this is and, and this sharia, like it says in Tanya, means that it's market that surrounds them. It might not be internal. They might not feel this holiness when they're sitting together. They might be uh, a group, uh, you know, playing football or. Uh, you know, having a having a beer together, and but the fact that there's these ten Jews together makes the it it, it makes this holiness come upon them. It might be in a way of makif. Uh, so, and then it, the the pasuk continues that there's seven tubes, which is the bringing down this uh, beyond this makif energy. And uh, it, it comes down in sevens. 
And then the pasuk continues, Lanaris Ashal Rosha, that there are seven to the lamps that are at the top. Uh, the seven tubes, the lamps on the top. In other words, that there's the lamp, the, the cup which holds the oil, and then there's the um, the stick which comes down underneath. Um, but what does it mean spiritually? Uh, so we've, that that uh, and it says it it that uh, and it says that the uh, menorah was all made of was all made of um, gold, and we've already said earlier that the idea of gold is uh, connected to um, reverence to uh, the side of the left spiritually, gvoris, and uh, like there's a pasuk which uh, in uh, Eve. Uh, chap in chapter 37 near the end uh base which says uh, that gold from the north and uh north when you're facing east north north is the left and therefore it refers to Gvora reverence whereas uh um uh, chesed uh, the sign the side of kindness and love the right that's connected to silver so either way so we've got uh, uh silver we've got gold and uh, by the way, in the same pasuk in Eiv, the pasuk ends off. It says mitzaf and zav yasa that gold comes from the north, and al um, elikan uh, On God, there is awesome glory. So again, noira awesome is kind of, is the same word as yira's reverence. Uh, so that's uh, gold. This gold of noira. So we'll get back to explaining them no more soon. There's a passage that we've quoted from Hallel that says, that Hashem is so high that he, he can uh, sit, he can lower himself. And he, he lowers himself to uh, see and to care for what's happening in the heaven and earth. So now this word, Shemayim, heaven, it comes from two words, Shom Mayim, there is water. Now, the idea of water is to flow down. Like we've said, that fire goes up, whereas water flows down. So it's the idea of hamshacha, bringing down uh, in a, in, so that the, the lower uh, the, the lower beings are able to uh, take, take in Hashem's light in a way of mamale. And uh, the Pasuk says that Hashem lowers himself to see. Bashamayim uvar. It says twice in the heavens and in the earth, not just in the heavens and earth, but in twice. And uh, uh, what this means is that uh, Hashem lowers himself uh, to see in the heavens and in the earth. Or, or that, uh, so in other words, that his, his, his uh, lowering himself into these two realms. Or that uh, through Shemaim and Aretz, that's how Hashem lowers himself uh, and uh, loans himself uh, in, in general to the to lower worlds and creations. So the concept is that uh, when we talk about Hashem being high and low, obviously we don't mean uh, within a place. Hashem is not in place. Uh, rather, what we mean is uh, in level that uh, really Hashem is uh, ultimate is the ultimate of uh, being high, sublime, and, and above. And the whole concept of of uh, worlds which which work within the ten sphere the spheres is uh, Hashem is totally beyond that. So the world is is created with chachma and with chesed, with wisdom and with kindness and all the ten attributes. And Hashem is way beyond. Like it says that all the midas are lecha Hashem agdola, that gedola uh, greatness, which is uh, chesed, belongs to Hashem. Vagvura, vatiferis, gvura, tiferis, all the seven midas and all the ten midas, uh, the ten spheres, they all just belong to Hashem, but Hashem is beyond beyond them, that they're all nullified before Hashem. You know, like it also says, kolom b'chachma sisa, that everything is made with chachma. And Hasidus explains this means that even wisdom, the highest of the ten spheres, compared to Hashem is like asiyah, is just like action, it's, it's external. Uh, so what when Hashem uh, gets involved in worlds, that's a descent. And this happens through Torah and mitzvahs. That's how Hashem gets involved with his creations uh, in, in a deeper way. Like it says that Hashem also does the mitzvahs. It says Hashem, uh, just like we put up, uh, there's a mitzvah to put on tefillin, so Hashem puts on tefillin. And uh, just just like we daven, so the, the Gemara and Brachas talks about how Hashem davens and, and, um, and uh, what he says when he davens. 
And uh, when uh, Moshe was uh, asking for atonement and forgiveness after the golden calf, so it says that Hashem wrapped himself in, in a talus and said the Yudgim Omid Asarachman, the 13 attributes, and taught Moshe how to daven. And, and it, we also say that uh, Hashem divides his uh, day, his time, so to speak, and with the, begin, the first three hours of the day, he is occupied in Torah. The same thing with all mitzvahs, that the, all the mitzvahs Hashem commands us to do, he also does. And that's what we mean when we say, when we say a bracha before doing the mitzvah, we say that Hashem has sanctified us with his mitzvahs, meaning that it's his mitzvahs, that he does them as well. And uh, that's why the uh, mitzvahs are called the, the, the 248 mitzvahs are called the 248 limbs of the king of Hashem. That a limb, it's not a separate thing, but it, it the whole point of the limb is that it's bottled, it's nullified, and uh, to let the, the uh, neshama and let the soul and the, the person's life force shine through so that the eye is not just this... Uh, blob but you, you can actually see through it and the same thing with the ear and you can hear and all the limbs that they do their purpose because they're nullified to the uh, light the vitality of the body letting it shine through it and the same thing with the mitzvahs that that that, that is how Hashem reveals himself although Hashem is totally beyond and unlimited but he reveals himself within this uh, uh, place this realm of uh, limits Next paragraph. This is what the Pazik means. That look down from heavens and see. And there's another similar Pazik. Look down from your holy abode from the heaven of and bless your people Israel. Because really Hashem is beyond. And uh, and like the Pazik says, Hashem, that Hashem is uh, beyond all nations. And therefore... When uh, when uh, Hashem by himself would just uh, uh, his he his light shines to all people, so it's without it you know without uh, the same level of active care because really they're totally beyond, and uh, and therefore you can have things going the the wrong way. How can it be that we've got uh, we we can have uh, the uh, you know base amigdash defiled? And what do you mean? It's the place of ultimate holiness. How could it happen? It's because of this makif energy and this sort of uh, uh, removed energy that doesn't mind. It can shine everywhere. The sun shines everywhere. It doesn't like say, oh, I'm only going to shine in the right place. It goes everywhere. So this level of makif allows anything to happen. Like uh, it says that you could have even a spider in the palace of the king. It's although it's incongruent, it still can be there. And uh, uh, so there, 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 there could be uh, darkness and light is all the same. And like it says in Zayah, when Hashem uh, uh, moves away, departs upward, meaning that uh, this is a, a, a time of, uh, of uh, removed, uh, like enlivening the world, keeping the world going in a removed way where really essentially the worlds have no value compared to Hashem and that's like the idea of uh, sleep when talking about Hashem that uh, when a person sleeps and then his uh, his mind his intellect steps back it's not actively involved and therefore his dreams go all over the place because uh, he only has his imagination and the same the idea with Hashem what does sleep mean it means Hashem is removing his active involvement and letting things be as they are even if they are totally wrong from a spiritual perspective and the idea of waking up is to make sure that know that the world goes according to the way it should with Hashem being involved and making it making it, everything happen in, in the uh, what is uh, clearly the, the the right way and that uh the deeper involvement and uh um you know mix mixing in to ensure that everything is as it should is uh, happens through Torah mitzvahs and that's what we mean when we ask Hashem to to look down from the heavens that we like we said that heavens shamayim is made up of two words shamayim there is water and Torah is compared to water because Torah like water flows down it brings Hashem uh in a in a deeper way uh, to have deep involvement in in uh, worlds and, and there should be more revelation of Hashem's light in the worlds and that's why it says look down from heavens and bless your people Israel that uh, that through mitzvahs 
uh, we uh, we uh, expand our, our importance expands with Hashem, and uh, the to, to, because the Torah uh, Torah is revealed with revealed with us, and so therefore we become more important. And this is also what the pasuk means, and that when the he- the heavens open up. And the heavens opened up, and I saw Mare Salikim, a vision of Hashem. So th- this idea of a Mare refers to a, like a magnifying glass, where we see Hashem clearly. And uh, when you look through a magnifying glass, it makes whatever you're looking at look bigger than what it actually is. And uh, that also happens through our mitzvahs, that uh, that uh, we, we are seen before Hashem in a, in a, in a praiseworthy way and in a great way. And this is what it means in the pasuk we've quoted before uh, uh, that Yisrael that uh, who is like your people Israel, one nation in in on earth, meaning that we cause Hashem to be revealed, the Hashem Echad, the one God, to be revealed on earth, and that's through our mitzvahs. Now the Gemara says that mitzvahs tzrichas kavana, the mitzvahs need intention one must uh, have have intention when doing a mitzvah and this is not just the intellectual intention but in, it, it should be intention of the heart that we're trying to bring Hashem down to be revealed within this world of uh, spheres and this world of limitations and that's uh, the that's also part of the idea of gold that gold the sparkle of gold which is uh, and and this is similar to fire as well uh, that uh, it it uh, it links the fire, which is the idea of the passionate love, and that is when every day Torah is new to new to you, new to the person. When every day he ref- he reflects about how Hashem is everlasting, and really Hashem is totally beyond worlds, and and nevertheless he gave us this path to connect to him uh, through Torah mitzvahs. So this is all one interpretation. Of Bashamayim Varetz, we said that uh, we we wanted to explain what it means when it says that Hashem lowers Himself. Hamashbili lira is Bashamayim Varetz. Hashem lowers Himself to see in the heaven and earth. So this is all one interpretation that that um, that through our Torah mitzvahs, Hashem lowers Himself uh, from the heaven. Then heaven is Shamayim, like water that it flows down into Aretz, into uh, onto earth through us uh, doing Torah and Mitzvahs. This concludes uh, today's daf.